It's my pleasure to welcome the new general manager of the San Jose Sharks, Mike Greer, to the San Jose Sharks Audio Network. Mike, congratulations on the opportunity. What does it mean to you to become a general manager in the National Hockey League? Thanks, Dan. Well, I'm super excited. It's almost hard to put in words into words. It's something I've, I've always wanted to do, and to be able to do it in, with the Sharks, is, it means the world to me and my family. It's a place I loved playing. I have a lot of passion for the community and, and the franchise, so to get this opportunity, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Over the three years you played for the Sharks, you were just a really important player. We're in some crazy playoff series. Any special memories as a player that, that you can recall that are, that are special for uh, you? Well, we had a lot of, we had a lot of good memories. Um, we probably didn't do as well, quite as well as we wanted to. Um, one of them probably would be Patrick Miller's overtime goal in, uh, in Nashville game one where, you know, we were feeling good about ourselves, but we let the game kind of get away from us a little bit, but battled back to tie it up and then Riz won it in overtime. So that's, that's one of the games I, I will always remember. Yeah, I remember that too because Riz gave away the puck earlier in the game and <laughs> he came right. back, scored the game winner. Right, uh, yeah. Lots of ups and downs. You were part of that four overtime game against the Dallas Stars. Uh, the last series you had for the Sharks was against Anaheim, but that was all building blocks for, for what uh, became a management career that uh, now culminates in this opportunity with the San Jose Sharks. But I want to go through the journey a little bit. After your career ended, you did some work with the, the place you did, uh, you played hockey at in school, St. Sebastian's, and uh, coached a couple of teams in Boston. But very very slowly started to get back into the game. Tell us about the, just that evolution and, and how it got you back. Yeah, I took, once I retired, I took a little time off to, to spend time at home and help out at home and, and be a dad. And then I, from there I went, I was an assistant coach at St. Sebastian School for four years and coached my son's team. And, you know, the, the hockey itch and the competitiveness started to, you know, started to come back and the fire started burning. And, Got a job scouting with the Blackhawks, doing some amateur and pro scouting. I, I got to give them a lot of, um, you know, credit for believing in me, and they gave me a lot of responsibility to be involved in amateur things and be in involved in the draft and, and free agency and do some stuff on the pro side as well. So I really appreciate what they did for me. And from there, I, I did some stuff with the women's national team, helping them get ready for the 2018 uh, Winter Games. and some evaluation and scouting for the players um, for that team. And then luckily for me, I t got a job with the Devils and kind of got me back into the into the NHL. Coached there for two years and I, I really enjoyed it, built some good relationships. And But I always, in the back of my mind, I always knew I wanted to get into management and front office. And Chris Jury, you know, he hired me as soon as he got the job and I dove in and he was great with me. You know, he had me involved in pretty much every every part of the organization, every meeting, all the decisions. So um, I owe him a lot, and I really enjoyed working for him and in, in the Rangers. And all this has kind of led me to where I am today. And we can't forget the fact that uh, management in professional sports is kind of in your family. Your dad, Bobby, was an NFL player personnel director, and uh, your brother, Chris, is currently the general manager of the Miami Dolphins in the National Football League. Uh, how much of what they've experienced uh, helps you in terms of understanding what the day-to-day -day operations of being a GM is like? Oh, it's huge. I think um, we always would talk at the dinner table, talk. I'd always want to talk football. They'd always want to talk hockey. But we've talked a lot about, you know, building rosters and player development, you know, what guys, what they didn't like, what they do like you know, how to treat people and just their general views on how to run an organization. So for me, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have that background and that knowledge and wisdom that they passed on to me. And um, I don't even think they realize it, but they've, were kind of helping groom me for this role unknowingly. Also, when you were scouting in Chicago, you really got down to the building blocks of what's really needed to bring talent into the organization. What's your philosophy on that? Um, for me, I think you got to find good people, and whether that's, you know, in the hockey ops department or on the ice, it's finding good people who have passion and love to play the game, um, highly competitive people. I, th I believe if you're a competitive person, then, you know, if you, you'll have your flaws, but you'll work to get better. So hardworking, competitive, passionate players are, is what we're looking for. And you know, try and bring, in, bring as many of those as I can into the organization. How do you assess where the Sharks are right now? Um, 
I mean, it's kind of hard from the outside. I think you don't really truly know until you're in the grind and in the in the battle with the players and around them day to day. But I think it's been a couple of years of up and, that they've been up and down and probably haven't met the expectations that that they've had for themselves. And but some of that's just a cycle of sports. They've had such a long run of being successful and being a cup contender that you know eventually at, at some point it, the bill comes due. And that uh, is where you come in, of course, and the staff that you're going to assemble. If you were to try to uh, put uh, into really short phrases what a San Jose Sharks player has to be like in order to play for you, like what attributes does he have to have? Uh, tenacious, hardworking, good teammate, passionate, competitive. I think for me those are the foundation of the players that I want and the players that I'm looking for. And I think if you watch the finals and watch the playoffs this year, I think you know that's what that's what stands out when you watch the teams that were able to advance in the playoffs. You obviously got a lot of work to do between now and the start of the season. You have some scouts uh, to add to the organization. You have uh, a coach that you have to hire. What are you looking for in a head coach? Um, you know, someone that sees the game similar to me, but also has their own opinion on how the game should play, so we can figure out together what's best, but basically I'm looking for someone who's got, you know, good, strong communication skills, wants to play a, a fast, um, tempo game, and um, can build relationships not only with me, but with the players. I think that's a, that's a big part of it is, is communication. So communication will be a strong point, but someone who wants to play a, an up-tempo, fast, competitive, hard game. As somebody who played at BU, you got to have at least a, a nice flag out for the fact that John McCarthy, who has all those qualities, is going to be the head coach of the San Jose Barracuda. Is he pretty much the type of guy that, uh, that you want in teaching your young kids? Absolutely. Uh, Johnny's known him for quite some time, and he's definitely the person. He's detailed, he's hardworking, he's smart, he's dedicated, he's passionate, I think our prospects and, and uh, players down there are going to be in great hands with him. He's, he loves his job, he takes it seriously, and he wants what's best for the players. So at the end of the day, they're going to get the best coaching and development around, and uh, I think we're very fortunate to have him. You've also got this staff that has been great support for the team. Joe Will, assistant general manager, part of the process to get you here, and uh, also your training staff and a, and a group of other people that have been around the team a long time that you know. Uh, how comforting is it to, to have that already in place? Oh, it is a great deal. It means, uh, makes my life easier. You know, you come in there and see some familiar faces and people that you enjoy being around and spending, spending time with. And I think that's a big part. We're going to have to put a lot of work in, a lot of time together. And, you know, you want to be around people that you know and you enjoy and, and like working with. So just have those guys here and, you know, it made the, you know, part of the decision to come here that much easier. One thing that is also notable, obviously, this is a historic hire. You're the first black American to be named the general manager of a National Hockey League franchise. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important for sure. It's, uh, you know, whenever these things happen in, in sports and in life, it's, it's, uh, it's a big moment and I'm proud of it and hopefully I can do well and help open the doors for other minorities to get into front office positions. I think, um, you know, hockey since I played is getting more and more diverse, not only on the ice, but off the ice. There's more, you know, blacks and minorities and women involved in scouting and coaching and for an office position. So it's good to see. So, you know, I'm, I'm proud. And like I said, hopefully I can do a good, a, a good job. So, you know, there, there's more to follow. Up-tempo and tenacious hockey, that uh, basically spells your career. And you say that's the way you want the San Jose Sharks to play. Um, what do you expect in your first season how, how the ups and the downs that, that always come whenever there are changes? Right. I think it's definitely. Um, I don't think it's going to be, I'm not expecting smooth sailing. I think there'll be some highs and some lows, but I expect the team to, to play hard and to compete every night. And, um, you know, if they do that I, at the end of the day, regardless of the wins or losses, you know, we, we, we can't be upset with it. So an honest effort and show up every, every night to the rink to play and, you know, we'll take our lumps and, and move forward. What about the sense that uh, you're part of a long-standing Sharks family? That's the way it always has been in San Jose, that anybody who wears that sweater is obviously a shark for life. And how uh, does that help in terms of your family readjusting to coming back into the game here? Yeah, it's, it was a, it's a great community. They welcomed us from, from day one. And, you know, 
even now uh, today, once kind of the news started to break, you know, people, old teammates and things like that started to reach out. So it really is a family environment and it's a place that, you know, we enjoyed being and I think anyone who comes and plays here really loves it. So it's, uh, we're happy to be back. Any final message to Sharks fans that are listening to this? Um, you know, stick with us. It's, uh, I know it's been a bumpy few years, but we're going to get this thing turned around and, and put a product on the ice that you'll, you'll be proud of and happy to watch. Well, we're proud to have you here. Congratulations and welcome. Yeah, thank you.